curious. That's the first word that brought me to the Can-Am Riker. Curiosity. I was at the computer, I was on Facebook Marketplace actually, and one of these popped up and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot that Can-Am had come out with a much more reasonably priced three-wheeled machine. It had the Spider for a while, and then they released this Riker. Smaller engines, smaller body, lower weight, lower cost, making for a lower cost of entry. But I still had not spent any time on one of these three-wheeled contraptions, and having grown up riding snowmobiles, riding dirt bikes, four-wheelers, driving cars, riding motorcycles, it was one of the few things that had eluded my butt and my hands, and I thought, no longer. We need to see what these things are all about. So I reached out to Can-Am and they hooked me up with this base model, although equipped with the 900 inline three four-stroke advanced combustion engine providing about 82 horsepower. Other than that, base model Riker gave it to me for a week and said, here, try it out, have some fun. And have some fun I have. Beautiful fall day. Here in Michigan, late October, the leaves are changing, everyone's out and about buying pumpkins and watching football, and I'm out here racing around back roads on this three-wheeled machine. So let's get behind the handlebars and talk about what makes the Riker a unique machine and one that a lot of people should consider for a fun weekend or midweek sort of toy. Now there are tons of specs, facts, and figures you can find on the Riker on the internet. You all are smart and capable. If you're watching this, you must have some sort of connected device. You can find these things. I'll tell you what you really need to know. Like I said, this is an inline three paired up to a continuously variable automatic transmission. I guess I should go through some of the basics on how you actually ride this thing and what makes it unique, I should say. So right off the bat, you've got a very functional key. This thing is actually really neat because you can pair this smart key to multiple Can-Am products, so, or even just BRP products. So they say you had a Ski-Doo snowmobile and a Sea-Doo uh, PWC, personal watercraft, uh, jet ski, if you will. I know that's a copyrighted term, but, but that sort of thing. Personal watercraft or, or ski boat or something, or a four-wheeler or anything like that. You could pair this key to that, and not only that, you can pair multiple keys to this one vehicle. So it's many different ways to do it. You can pop it on there, kind of out of the way. Uh, a few other things. These pedals are adjustable, so whether you are short, tall, you like a different sort of riding style, you can make it adjusted to your comfort and your preference. The handlebars are also adjustable, so you can just really quickly flip this up bring them forward toward you and flip them out and i actually like being able to hop adjust like that on the fly because depending on my riding style and what sort of riding i'm doing what sort of roads i actually like to change it up so that's pretty neat on top of that you got a parking brake because there is no uh, transmission if we will to, to kind of stop this from rolling so you have to engage that manually and you have a little bit of storage up here as well which is certainly convenient for those of you who are familiar with uh, very limited storage capacities. It's nice being able to throw something in there without having to necessarily carry a backpack. Fuel tank is filled up in here, not locking, but if you're in the right sort of situation, it's not a big deal. You do have this three-wheeled setup, so these are essentially car tires. They they are not rounded like motorcycle tires. They're much more flat, and the whole riding experience of this is very flat. I'm actually not gonna really talk about motorcycles in this comparison. If you do wanna see a comparison to the Riker and a motorcycle, check out the links in the description. We did shoot a video on that, but I wanna talk more just about the Riker in a vacuum and in and of itself today in this review. Disc brakes all around. I think that's about the most you need to know in order to ride this thing. The startup process is kind of interesting. The, the key doesn't do any sort of ignition it's simply a, a security device. If you press power button, you get a gauge, pops on up, fully digital, LCD. All foot brake down here, so no hand brakes. And that gets into keyword number two for this machine, approachable. It's a very low seat height. I am five foot 10, my feet are on the ground, no issues there. People of any height would be able to sit on this. Even if you only had one arm, you could ride it because all you have to do is 
is twist the throttle with your right arm. I suppose if you only had your left, maybe you could get it converted or something like that. And all the braking is done with your right foot. So it's in line, the front and the rear's brake at the same time. Again, very approachable. Roll the throttle forward, push in the brake. Starts right up. This engine is so buttery smooth in all products that Can-Am puts it in, or BRP, I should say. It's almost, in some ways, to its detriment because it's such a uh, it's such a benign character, but it does provide a good amount of grunt. Woo! Look at that! I can one hand drift this thing. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Away we go. Curious and approachable. Two words so far to express my time with Riker. It doesn't take years and years of being a power sports enthusiast to figure out how to ride this thing and to be able to get away with it. With three different driving modes, Eco, Normal, and Sport, you can put it into a mode that isn't going to completely throw you off the machine as soon as you give a twist of your right wrist. Turning radius, quite good. Right now we're in sport mode, but I can switch it right back to Econ, or Eco. Still get a good amount of pull in Eco mode, but it does dial it back just a little bit. It takes the edge off when you twist the throttle. Still plenty of grunt. Pull through the corners. Normal mode gives you what you would expect in terms of throttle response and then sport mode is essentially the same throttle response maybe a little bit more aggressive but more so it dials back the traction and stability control allows you to hang it out a little bit more and have a little bit more fun that's what this thing does really well approachable fun it's an entirely unique riding experience that should be enjoyed and appreciated for what it is. With a Riker, I can go out on freezing days. I could go out in the rain. I could go out on dirt roads. I could go out even just running errands and have a lot of fun. More fun and a more unique experience than I would in a car without a lot of the perils that come from other sorts of power sports. It's accessible, approachable, fun. You can certainly chirp that rear tire, uh, whether that be intentionally or unintentionally. One thing that's great with the Riker is you see all this mud and dirt on the road. You have so much less fear of what might be on the road, what sort of conditions you're going to come around. These roads that I'm riding on right now are fairly smooth, they're nice, they're good condition. But you get over some broken asphalt, some big bumps, potholes, things that could really spell disaster for a less than experienced rider on a motorcycle. It's just not going to be an issue on something like this. You're going to be able to take it much more positively and ride over much worse terrain, whether that's just poor infrastructure or it's something like a dirt road, two track. They make other models that are even more catered for that. The rally model is a little bit more off-road pretense and a special rally mode that really lets you get goofy off-road. On top of the fact you're not going to get thrown off when you just run over any sort of uh, broken asphalt or, or bad road condition is the fact that these brakes work so well over so many different road conditions. I'm doing 60 right now, if I had a panic stop, you see back there I mean that was broken asphalt right there and the thing balanced and handled and ABS just properly and brought me to a stop so much faster than most motorcycles would. 
here we are, sport mode. Let's dip down onto this dirt road. Say so you live on a dirt road, say so you're just like exploring, say so you live in an area with a lot of dirt roads. Watch this. Awful, awful road surface. And it just cars right around. <laughs> there's no way. I've, I've ridden down this road before on my motorcycle. And there's no way I would tackle it like this on my bike. And again, watch me hit the brakes. <laughs> Look at that. It left black marks on the dirt road. Can you imagine stopping like that on so many other machines like this? And away it goes. <laughs> it's so cool to be able to watch the suspension work, watch the front wheels, kind of oh, take those bumps. This is a base model, but if you step up to the Sport or the Rally, you get upgraded KYB shocks. In fact, this thing gets more fun on the dirt because of the way you can slide it around, counter steer, and really have some fun. The Riker allows for a lifestyle that wouldn't be accessible to everyone before a product like this existed. Even when you just had the Spider on the market, those were much more expensive. The, Spy the Riker starts at about $9,000 with the base motor and allows you to have fun in so many situations that just wouldn't have been possible before a machine like this existed. It is quirky and it is different. It's... <laughs> you don't ride it like really anything else. Whether it be a soul mule, a motorcycle, a jet ski, it kind of takes different elements in all of those. Man, it just allows you to have such a unique experience. I love it. The other thing is that automatic transmission makes it so accessible as well. And that brings us to the third word and, and lasting word for the Riker is accessibility. It's... I, I actually almost think that word sells it a little bit short because it is an incredibly accessible machine, but what it makes accessible is this exposed new experience to any sort of riding that you're doing, whether it's city commuting, or it's country road burning, or highway miles eating. It opens up uh, an opportunity to get out and ride that might have not been there for so many different people. Whether it's fear of what else is on the market, or lack of confidence or lack of physical ability. The Riker fills a gap that I don't think a lot of people realize existed, but it certainly carves out a niche for itself. It's cool for that. It's so nice to be able to just come to a red light like this and just kind of sit. of this very smooth engine and that CVT automatic transmission, it makes for a, a more refined, smooth experience and being a more traditionally power sports kind of guy, that's not exactly what I was looking for at first and expecting, I've kind of come to appreciate it after some time here. And when you do get a chance to really open it up, gosh, it's, it's fun. I'm still really impressed with how it takes bumpy roads. This is kind of getting into a little bit more medium bumpiness. Still, it's, it's, if you get just the right sort of bump on the rear wheel, it does rock you around a bit, but I'm really impressed with how well the suspension geometry is done in the front to take bumps. The other element of accessibility in this is sort of the, the mistake prevention. If you push this thing too hard into a corner, it, it does everything it can to compensate for you, even in the more aggressive sport mode like this. It has stability control. It has uh, brake prevention to keep you from either tipping or sliding too much or, or losing your grip and, and really screwing up on this machine. And that gets into the accessibility as well, of just that it, you have to really try and intentionally mess up on this machine. The worst thing you could do is, I suppose, take a corner too fast at a high speed and fling yourself off from an inertia perspective, just kind of fall off the seat, but if you have a good grip on the handlebars and you don't ride too fast, 
and this will prevent you from maybe taking a turn too sharply uh, to where the tires can't get, handle it. You can tell the engineers did a ton of work to make this a machine that you don't have to be a professional in order to ride it. Speaking of that, how about legalities? You do have to have an endorsement to ride this, at least here in the state of Michigan, but they make three-wheel motorcycle endorsements rather than just two-wheel motorcycle endorsements. So if you don't have any interest in riding a two-wheel motorcycle, but you still want to ride a Riker or a Spider, you can go to many dealerships, including Motor City Power Sports and Blue Hills, where this one is from, and they provide classes throughout the year to get you endorsed and qualified and legal to ride this thing on public roads. It's not a difficult course, and again, all part of that accessibility aspect. They're going to make sure you're safe, they're going to make sure you know what you're doing, and then send you out have some fun. Get into more of a aggressive city situation here, a lot of traffic, a lot of lanes. Kind of show you how to Riker makes this all very navigable. Plenty of power to get out of people's way. Turn up onto the highway. putting a pipe on this to liven up the engine sound a little bit because it sounds good but it's very subtle. What a neat experience it really is. I'm so happy to have gotten a chance to spend time with one of these. It's just cool and it's it's another thing to put in the arsenal of cool things that you can have in your stable whether this is your only machine, whether this is kind of your dose of power sports fun, or if you're someone who has all sorts of different toys and this is just perfect for just the right sort of situation. And I could totally see a lot of those types of situations being right for this. It's accessible, approachable, and curious. People see it and they're like, what is that? That thing looks so cool. It looks like something out of Halo, or it looks like something, um, out of Star Wars or or it looks like a grasshopper. I mean, there's so many different things to say about it But what I love about it is that it's unique and it provides something that no other machine does I could absolutely see myself getting one of these later on in life when uh, Maybe I want a little bit more stability. I want a bit a little bit more safety But still want the excitement of being open on a machine like this So thank you so much to Can-Am for letting us spend some time with this Shout out to Motor City Power Sports, who made the loan happen. We're going to get this thing fueled up, cleaned up a little bit, and get it back to some next owner. And thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.